Hi everybody, this is Steve Cruz. Um, I'm also known as High Speed uh, 1964 on some of the forums out there. I uh, just wanted to kind of uh, do a quick video here. This is going to be a just raw video. I don't have a lot of editing tools to make it fancy or put titles on it or anything like that. But uh, I wanted to do a uh, video of the first run up uh, of the um, motor and transmission unit that you see in front of you here. Uh, I'll go over each of the pieces here before I do anything. Um, but uh, so we're going to go in and uh, do the uh, uh, the run up here in just a moment. But first, uh, what you see here is the motor and the planetary gear assembly. The planetary gear assembly will act in this case uh, like a transmission, a single speed transmission. Uh, it is a one stage uh, planetary gear system. Uh, it has a 4.33 to 1 ratio. I'll be driving this with a uh, Hobby King or Hobby Wing, excuse me, uh, Platinum V3 uh, speed controller. Uh, the speed controller I'll just use a little servo tester to run things up with. Um, I don't want to get involved with all the radio transmitter receiver set up on the bench here right now. Uh, this is just a quick and easy way to test it. Um, just like any servo tester, you rotate the knob and the servo would uh, normally move the arm to the position you indicate with the knob. Now in this case, since it's hooked up to a speed controller, uh, you'll see that the speed controller responds by providing the uh, desired speed out of the motor. Uh, before we do the run-ups, I wanted to do some uh, quick checks on the mechanical by using my hands to turn the motor. Uh, show you the ratios, how it all works, uh, and things like that. So I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit and uh, I wanted to show you uh, how some of these markings line up. Uh, if you can see right here, there are some markings on the motor can that I'll use as a reference. And then there's a screw here on the body of the planetary gear assembly. And then finally there is a flat section on the shaft which you can see here as I rotate it. You can see the shiny spot there. So I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. So first things first, I wanted to do a mechanical check of the assembly. And I'm going to do that just by rotating the, the uh, motor can by hand. Let's see if I can get a better focus on that. There we go. So first things first is checking to see and make sure that there's no binding. I feel clicks from the motor, but that's normal. It's a, a brushless motor and oftentimes you'll feel that cogging effect uh, as the magnets uh, spin through the magnetic fields of the coils in there. But other than that, I don't feel any real resistance uh, towards the movement of the motor. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to check the ratio. To do so, again, I have the marking lined up with the screw and the flat part of the shaft there. So I'm going to give this thing four and one-third spins, and that should bring the flat uh, part of the shaft here back around one time. And I'll count them off as I rotate them. So we go one, two, three, four. Now you notice that the flat spot is not quite back around to the screw yet. So I'll go until it is. And there we go, we're lined up. And that is approximately one more, one third more turn of the motor. So it is a 4.33 to one ratio that we have out of the motor here. So I'm gonna go ahead and spin it a little bit faster by hand now. Just make sure we've got everything running nice and smooth. I feel, again, no binding, no resistance. Uh, everything seems to be rotating quite nicely. So I think we're just about ready to do our first electrical run up here for the demonstration of the video. So the way we do that is I just need to hook up the battery to the speed controller. We'll do that right here. Okay. I have the battery plugged in, speed controller at zero. As you can see right there, the white mark is at the zero mark. So as I rotate the knob, 
the motor should start spinning. Now, the motor being larger than the transmission unit or the planetary gear drive, I can't just leave it le resting on the desktop or the motor would just spin its way off the, the tabletop here. So I'm going to actually hold this in one hand like so and then I'll run up the speed controller. Now the speed controller is set for slow start mode uh, but it's not set for governed mode. So, it, uh, excuse me, I take that back. I don't think it is set. Let me... I'll know here in just a moment when I spin it up. I think I actually turned off the slow start. Um, so as I rotate the knob here, let's see if I can get this all in frame. There we go. As I rotate the knob here, you'll see the motor starting to spin. And I'm going to take it very slowly because I, you know, I've only done the mechanical checks by hand. Now I'm going to do it under electrical power. So I need to be able to uh, kill the power real quickly if I feel anything going wrong in the motor or in the transmission. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up slowly. And if it's uh, in slow start mode, uh, there it goes. Okay. Okay, it's running. Very slowly. Now if I were to go up quickly, in slow start mode it would take some time to spin up. That sounds like it's on slow start mode. Okay, so I am at approximately 10%. percent uh, I'm number one on the, the servo controller here. I'm going to bring it up to about 20% or number two. There's number two. Everything feels nice and smooth. The motor is turning. But it's very low torque. But if I come over to the shaft, because of the reduction in speed, it has more torque and it's harder to get it to slow down by touching the shaft. So now I'm going to bring it up slowly. There's 30%. Everything's still running smooth. Now one thing that the uh, salesman that I talked to when I bought this uh, gearbox, the planetary gear drive, uh, did tell me is that um, because of the amount of power that I'm putting through this drive and because of the fact that the drive is operating at about 90% efficiency, it will start to get warm to the touch. Right now, not so bad. but. Uh, when you consider that the motor uh, can go upwards of around 610 um, watts of power passing through here, it drops about 10% of that power in heat. 10% uh, of 610 is about 61 watts. So imagine a 60 watt light bulb uh, running uh, and you can imagine how warm this thing may get. So that's one of the things I'm going to be checking as I run this up. So that's at 30%. Uh, yeah, it's getting just a little bit, you know, noticeably warm, but not hot or anything. So we're going to run it up to about 50% now. Again, still running nice and smooth. I'm not feeling any real vibrations. Um, the motor, you can, if I move it back and forth, I can feel the torque of it. And now I am starting to feel a little bit of warmth coming out of that box. Okay, that's at 50%. And again, lots of torque here. Low torque there. The torque increases as the speed gets decreased. Now in my model, the Huey that I'm building this project for, I anticipate running at about a 70% throttle, which will give me about a 2200% RPM, a 2200 RPM on the main rotor, and I'll explain the math of that in a little bit here. But there it is, it's running at 70%, still running nice and smooth. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep running these tests on a regular basis, and after about 10 uh, runs, after 25 runs, after 50 runs, however many runs I decide to get, and it's, it's starting to develop a little bit of warmth now. Uh, after, after a series of runs, I'm going to go ahead and take the mounting screws out, disassemble the gearbox and inspect it and see what kind of wear and tear I'm actually getting on the gears inside of the box there. Uh, but again, um, running at 70%, it's getting warm, it's not hot. 
Uh, you figure 70% of 600 watts is what about 450 watts. It'll be about the same as a 45, 40 or 45 watt light bulb, which still gets kind of warm. And I'm sure if I let this run a while, it'll start developing that kind of heat to it. Um, I may have to either come up with a heat sink to put around the box or figure out some way to attach a, a very lightweight uh, uh, fan mechanism to, to blow, air, blow air across it in the model once I get it, uh, everything running uh, completely. But uh, for now, 70%, that's where I'm going to be running it. It is still building up a little bit of heat. I can feel it on my fingers. I'm going to go ahead and run it up to 85% because the speed controller, when you run it in, in uh, governed mode, will only allow you to go to about 85%. Now, it'll take some of the extra power to keep that speed going, but uh, we'll see how she goes here. Slowly up to 80, and there's 85%. And again, that box is starting to get rather warm now, so I'm going to go ahead and bring it back down and let it uh, cool off for a little bit here. I'm not going to push it on my first run up here, so I'm going to go ahead and bring it down and stop it. So there we go. The first run up that you can uh, see on video here. Um, I'm using a Rotor Star uh, uh, motor here. It is uh, rated at 3600 kV, so every volt that I apply to the motor generates 3600 rpm now you'll notice that the battery is rated at 11.1 .1 volts it's a three cell battery at full charge this thing actually has about 12.6 volts coming out of it uh, nominal you'll find it run that you run it at about 11.4 to 11.6 volts but leave, let's figure uh, 20 uh, the, at the full the full charge voltage it's 12.6 uh, volts um, 12.6 times 3600 um, pull out my calculator here so I can give you the actual math and I'm going to set this stuff aside for a moment 